Hey, here's a walkthrough of the illustration pricing calculator I've been developing. There are other pricing calculators out there that you can use, but this one works a little bit differently. There's no historical data behind the scenes. All the results you get here will be based on the data you add. You can see here we've got four steps plus the results at the end. It's pretty straightforward and there are instructions here on the right to talk you through it. But I know I like watching video walkthroughs as well to make sure it sticks in my mind. First of all, we're going to look at your monthly expenses. Your rent, your utilities, maybe you need to hire equipment for your projects, or you'll need to get materials, and you think about uh, traveling to and from work as well. And anything else you want to add in here too. There's a currency switcher here. There's no live calculation going on at the moment. It's just a visual preference if you're used to working in dollars or euros. Maybe I'll add in live conversion in the future. There's a running total at the bottom. And from the values you enter here, the calculator will work out your daily and hourly rates. So let's move on to step two, your billable hours. You might work on client projects for a full eight hour shift every day, but a lot of the time you're going to be working on other things that you're not charging for. Things like your social media marketing and updating your website and other things that are essential for your business, but nobody's paying you to do them. So you might change your billable hours per day to five, for example. You can also add in how many holiday days uh, you take per year. The calculator already factors in weekends, so you don't need to worry about that. Then you can also have an option to change how many days per week uh, you'll work. I'll leave that at five for now. The next part is where you put in your hourly rate, uh, what you want your hourly rate to be. Although illustrators aren't typically charging based on their time, day rates or hour, hourly rates, for example, just like the expenses on the previous page, your time has a value and it is a cost. It's a part of your costs. In the early days of your career, the value of your time may be fairly low, but as you advance your career and improve your skills, the value of your time will go up, just as your expenses will go up over time. If you were to calculate your expenses and your time costs, and that came out to £500 for a project, and then you give that price to your client and they agree it, you are only breaking even. You know, you're not making a profit on that project, which is where the next stage comes in. Markup is the percentage you add on top of your costs to make a profit. Markup is very commonly used in all kinds of different industries. Generally speaking, a business will buy a service or a product at one price, add on a markup, and then sell that product at a higher price to their customers. So we've got two boxes here, one for your desired markup percentage. Let's change this to 25% here. And you can experiment with this as much as you like. The second box is the minimum markup percentage. The reason I've added this in here is because we need to set a lower limit on how much profit we can make on each project. If you were to spend three weeks on a project and at the end of it you're only making a 3% profit, that's not really a great deal for you. So I think 10% is a reasonable lower boundary that we wouldn't want to go under. It also means there's a bit of a buffer if the project drags on a little bit or, are this, or, or there are some fiddly changes that you need to take care of because they will take, take up more of your time. Anything under 0% here and you are eating into your costs. We really don't want to get anywhere near 0% basically. And by the way, if at any point the client asks you to itemize your price. You're not sharing your markup with them. If you were to go to a shop and a product you wanted to buy also listed the price the shopkeeper bought it for as well as the price they're selling it for, you might think twice about buying it. So you want to keep this to yourself. So now let's get into pricing. When the client brings you a project and you've read the brief and you've had a conversation about it, you can begin to estimate how long you think it's going to take. So in here, let's imagine the project is going to take five days. Okay. The calculator is going to factor in your expenses plus the cost of your time for those five days and add the desired 25% markup. I'll set the usage to none for now and we'll return to that in a couple of minutes. Then we've got two options. Either you need to calculate a price or the client has given you a budget for the project and you need to work out whether 
it's going to be profitable for you. Let's start with calculating a price. You can see the results here based on the data you've put in that the cost of doing the job, that's your time and expenses, is 1,376 plus the markup of 25%, which is 342 almost in currency. There are no usage fees for now, but the costs plus the markup, uh, I should say, the costs are your expenses and the value of your time plus the markup equal your production cost or creation fee if you're more comfortable with that phrase. So the total price for this project is £1,709. Out of that total you are making £342 profit. Now let's try the option where the client gives you a budget for the project and let's say this generous client is offering £2,000. We can see in the results here that the top lines are the same, there's still no usage, and the ideal price is still the same here. The client's budget is 2000 so you are now making £629 profit, which is 46% markup. But what happens if the client's budget is lower than your ideal price? Let's do an example. Let's say uh, the client's budget is 1300 all these data fields are the same, but you can see you're actually losing money on this. This is going to be eating into your costs by £68 minus 5% markup, if you want to put it like that. So you have a couple of options in this situation. You can negotiate the budget with the client, or you can reduce the amount of time you spend on the project. So let's go back and imagine that you negotiate with the client and you get them up to 1500 Okay, so we're profitable again. It's just on the border of that minimum lower boundary that we set of 10%. You make £137 profit. It's still lower than you'd like though, so maybe you also decide to spend a little bit less time working on the project. And maybe we bump that five days to four and a half days-ish. Okay, so now we've got a much healthier markup percentage of 19%. £239 profit. You've negotiated a better fee with the client, which is great, and you've adjusted how much time you're going to commit to work on the project uh, so you can land on a profitable outcome. All right, now let's reset this to the five day project we talked about earlier. And we'll calculate a price, but we'll look at the usage drop down. This is something I would encourage you to experiment with depending on the project. The range of multipliers here goes from 0.25 all the way up to times 5. And this multiplies your production cost or your creation fee. That's your expenses plus your time costs. That's how much it costs you to do the job plus your desired markup. The lower end multipliers here are going to be for relatively small usage projects. And the higher end multipliers are going to be when you're dealing with multiple usages, multiple territories, and longer durations, even buyouts. You're going to be looking in the top area here, probably. So let's imagine this five-day project that came in, uh, that came out to £1,709 is a reasonably small usage, and you think it should be a 0 0.75 multiplier. In the results, the top four lines are the same. But we have this new usage fee line here, which is the production cost times by 0 0.75. And then they're added together to give you the total price you can give to the client. But maybe the client decides they want additional usages. So you go back to the multiplier drop down and you decide that a 1.5 times multiplier is appropriate. Now we look back at the results. You get the production cost and the usage fee and the total price to give to the client. So because you've got this built-in 25% profitability uh, buffer, maybe you're going to round this down to 4,000 just for easy communication and easy maths. So you can go back and edit any of these data fields at any time. I mean, maybe you are changing your hourly rate, maybe you're changing your markup, you can change your expenses too because these will probably change over time. The, this pricing calculator isn't meant to be a one-stop 
perfect solution. But I think combined with the way you price your work now, it could be a useful addition to your toolbox. I'm always open to feedback and um, I'll make updates periodically based on that feedback. So I'd love to hear what you think.